Welcome to the Beat Reporter's Inbox on MLB.com, presented by Edward Jones. I'm Joe Forsaro, MLB.com Marlins reporter, with Andrew asking the questions. Andrew, what do we have first? The first one comes from Eddie. What are the chances JT Real Muto stays? The percentage they trade him? Eddie, you're asking kind of the, the number one question, the overriding theme of what will be the Marlins offseason. And I kind of look at it two ways. For one, you could look at it as obviously JT Real Muto is your all-star catcher, your face of your franchise, your best player. But you also have a team on a, on a build. Uh, as Derek Jeter likes to say, doesn't like the word rebuild. So we'll, we'll stay on that theme. And you got JT Real Muto two years away from being eligible for uh, free agency. So, to me, it's like, what are the Marlins thinking? Do they want to accelerate the process? Meaning, do they want to kind of add a little bit more? Kind of move that, that build faster? If so, then that to me is the, the sign that they'll keep Real Muto. Now, they could go on the other side and say, hey, you know what? Maybe we're not as deep. Maybe the system still needs some work. Maybe we're, we're not quite there yet. So we may want to slow it down another year. If they do so, then Real Muto may not be part of those plans. So I think that the ball is in you know, the court of what they, they ultimately decide their vision is. Do they feel they're closer or not? So if I were to put a percentage, I, I literally could say 50-50 because I'm not sold that they, that they feel they're any closer to being the type of championship caliber team they want to be. But they also know the pressure to win. This has been a long year. It's been a long decade for, for Marlin fans, a lot of losing. And new ownership, I think, kind of wants to make a statement and kind of get this thing rolling. So, uh, again, I think that they will present an opportunity for, you know, I'm sure, I'm sure they'll go to Real Muto and discuss the, the possibility of doing it. But I think the decision may not be so much in the hands of whether Real Muto says yes or no to an extension opportunity. I think it comes down to if the Marlins feel they can, they can win in these next two years or certainly by, you know, by 20, which would be uh, Real Mito's last year, and then go all in, then, you know, try to sign JT, make him the anchor, and, and move from there. Next one comes from Kenny. Who is your bet to be the face of the franchise? Well, I mean, we kind of backtrack a little bit. The face of the franchise currently, obviously, is JT Real Muto. That said, if Real Muto is not part of the plans, you know, I think a guy, Brian Anderson's had a really strong year. He's kind of been lost in the shuffle on the Rookie of the Year, um, you know, discussions. Anderson is a guy who, uh, homegrown, he was in the Futures game a year ago, has really stepped up, stepped up at third base, and he's, uh, you know, from start to finish. This is a really sound, solid player, a, a kind of a rock that he could have to build around. Now, that said, I, I think a guy like a Lewis Brinson, who has a lot of potential, will, will be that kind of guy. But I also think that we're, we're entering a the era of this sport where it's a depth-oriented sport, where it's not so much that one or two guys, it's, it's kind of system depth. I mean, we see teams like the Dodgers, the, the Astros. Now, certainly those teams have all-star players. But I, I think, you know, they're looking to build around as